the iPhone XS Max, Apple's most top-of-the-line flagship phone in 2018, and a not-so-bad deal on the used market in 2022. And despite it turning four years old come this September, you really wouldn't be able to tell through using it. It's got a gigantic, gorgeous OLED display, cameras that still pack a punch, and performance that'll have you covered no matter the situation. And with an average price of $700 on the used market, it's very tough to argue against the value for what you're getting here. And so in this video, I'm going to be giving my thoughts on each aspect of the iPhone XS Max from a 2022 perspective, as well as whether it's the right device for you. And by the way, if you'd like to see something specific, the timestamps are in the description below. So starting off like always with the design, the iPhone XS Max is truly gorgeous. Honestly, one of the best iPhone designs ever in my opinion. With the vertical camera bump, stainless steel rails, and glass back, it all just looks so clean, especially in the gold finish. Although, this phone was also offered in silver and space grey, both of which still look really good Good, but gold takes the cake here. But the XS Max's high-end nature doesn't just go as far as looks, as due to the premium materials, it still feels solid and sturdy in the hand, like it's not going to bend in half or anything. Although, obviously for some, the 6.5 inch screen size is going to be clunky to carry around, and you'll definitely have a hard time trying to use it with one hand. But despite this, the phone does make up for it, with its thinness of 7.7mm and weight of 208 grams. so it's pretty thin and light considering the size, although sacrificing chunkiness does does leave less room for battery size, unlike on the most recent iPhones that are thick with as many Cs as technologically possible, and due to this can last for days on a single charge. So that's something to decide for yourself, more thinness or better battery life. One dead giveaway of the phone's age though is the notch at the top, since the new iPhone 13s have shrunk it down significantly. But like, it's no biggie, you know, this is what Apple has been doing for years, plus 2018 was only the second year that they'd implemented it. Bottom line though, the XS Max has a beautiful, premium and timeless look and feel. Moving on to the display, the iPhone XS Max's age definitely doesn't play a part here, with it still boasting a very immersive and high-end viewing experience. It's got a 6.5-inch OLED panel with a resolution of 2688 by 1242 along with a pixel density of 458 pixels per inch. These are some serious numbers, even for 2022, and it ensures that no matter what you might be doing, whether that be watching a video, reading an article, or playing a game, every element is going to look razor sharp. Plus, you're also getting tons of screen real estate. In fact, it almost feels like a smaller iPad mini, and it's going to do especially well when it comes to watching a movie or playing a landscape game that requires you to hold the phone with two hands. The only real drawback to this display compared to Android competitors and the newest iPhone 13s is the lack of 120Hz refresh rate, which gives you much smoother scrolling and swiping, since the display is refreshing at 120 times per second, not 60. And once you use a phone that has this, it's pretty done difficult to go back. But to be completely honest, it's not an essential feature, and the average person isn't going to care too much about it. Only people who are tech enthusiasts will really give this a second thought. And with everything considered, there's no doubt that the iPhone XS Max has a display worth turning your head 360 degrees for in 2022. Moving on to the cameras, the XS Max still remains solid by all means. You can get some very impressive results with them, but because of the phone's age, they're nowhere near as capable as the setups on more recent iPhones like the 12s and 13s. On the rear, we have a 12 megapixel main lens, a 12 megapixel telephoto lens, which can optically zoom up to two times, and a front-facing 7 megapixel shooter. And as you can see, shots on the XS Max are still going to look pretty darn good with nicely done colors and exposure levels. It can still capture plenty of detail, and for the price, you're more than getting your money's worth. And additionally with that, there's also portrait mode, which still works pretty well despite the aging hardware, although like all of these older iPhones, it can struggle around the edges of the subject sometimes, but for the most part, it's still pretty good. But the area where it takes a serious hit is in lower light conditions due to the lack of night mode. Since this phone missed out on this ability, which allows you to take detailed shots in dark settings by one year, capturing images in these sorts of places will cause the XS Max to fall short, plus the sensors also aren't as big as the ones on newer iPhones, so your photos are going to get grainy more easily than normal. And additionally with that, the telephoto lens can zoom up to two times optically and up to ten times digitally, which means that you don't lose any quality of your photos if you keep the zoom below two times, but anything more than that and it's going to get more grainy as you zoom further, due to the zoom now being digital. The telephoto camera works okay on here, obviously the main lens is going to give you better overall quality, but hey, it's nice to have. But for the most part, as you can see from these samples, 
angles, the main lenses do the job more than well enough, whether you're an average Joe or a passionate iPhone photographer. Now in terms of the selfie camera, the 7 megapixels might sound pretty weak for 2022, and to be honest, it was considered outdated in 2018, compared to other companies' flagships at the time, which had much higher megapixel counts. Honestly, that should have been the year that Apple bumped it up to 12 megapixels. But even so, selfies are still good enough, and the average everyday person is going to be more than pleased with it. Now video can be recorded on the 10s Max in up to 4K at 60 frames per second, and like the photos, it rarely misses a beat. This was very impressive video for 2018, and even by modern standards, it still holds its ground. Although, do keep in mind that again, more recent iPhones are going to leave it in the dust, as they're not only going to be newer and better by default, but they also sport features like Dolby Vision HDR recording, cinematic mode, and Apple ProRes. But like, unless you actually need those features, or if you don't know what any of those things mean, it's not going to be a factor. If you don't care about them, and you just want your phone to shoot more than decent video, then the 10s Max should leave you feeling pretty satisfied. Now like the display, performance on here is something that feels like it's barely aged a day, let alone almost 4 years. The 10s Max sports the Apple A12 chipset and 4GB of RAM, and surprise surprise, it's going to fly through anything and everything. Whether that be day to day things like checking social media, texting, calling and moving around the interface, or heavily loaded tasks like 3D gaming, editing footage or downloading a large file, these specs will ensure a smooth, buttery, and snappy experience no matter what kind of user you are. I mean, sure, it's not going to exactly quote-unquote match up to the most recent iPhones. You know, there may be the odd occasion where it'll stutter or crash, but for 99.9% .9 of the time, the 10s Max still boasts performance that many would consider to be very high-end, and it really shows how great Apple is at keeping their older devices optimized and incredibly pleasant to use. And the icing on the cake here is that a processor this powerful will allow for many more years of future software updates, at least until 2025, if not longer, since the iPhone 6S from 2015 is guaranteed to receive support until this September, which is an insane 7 years, and honestly, I think the following generations of iPhones, like the 10s Max, are bound to receive even longer. Now, battery life on these older iPhones is usually an issue due to the cell inside degrading over time and therefore being able to hold less of a charge, but with the 10s Max's larger than average 3170 74 milliamp hour cell, you should still be able to get through the day on light to moderate use pretty easily. Obviously, it is going to depend device to device on how much of a flogging it's been given over the years, but generally speaking, for most people, it's going to be just fine. Move on to heavy use though, and you'll probably find yourself needing to plug in before night time. Again, keep in mind that this phone is very thin compared to newer iPhones, so the battery is significantly smaller. And so, if battery life is a big concern for you, then the 10s Max isn't your best bet, although still a decent one. If you really need your phone to last all day though, the 11 Pro Max from the year after sports a much bigger battery and was a massive jump ahead in terms of this, being able to last up to 5 hours longer, and it's only a couple hundred more bucks than the 10s Max on the used market, so I would highly recommend stepping up to that if battery life is a main concern for you. And so, keeping in mind everything I've gone over, is this the right phone for you? Well, if you're one to appreciate a gorgeous design, a razor-sharp display, and phenomenal performance, and if absolute top-end cameras aren't your main priorities, then the 10s Max seems like a solid catch, especially considering that you can find them for around $700 Australian on second-hand and refurbished sites. Although, if you are buying used, then you need to watch out for burn-in on the OLED display, as well as bad battery health. If you're not too keen on buying used, and that's understandable, buying used can be risky, the regular iPhone 11 is still being sold by Apple right now brand new, and it's still a fantastic option for most people. In fact, it's actually got even better battery life, cameras and performance than the 10s Max, although it does fall behind in terms of the display by a long shot, as well as its thicker aluminium body. I've actually recently done a review on the iPhone 11 from a 2022 perspective, so if you want to find out more about that, then the link for that video is in the description, or up in the top right hand corner. In a nutshell though, if you don't really Really care about the worst display and less premium design, then I'd just say go ahead and buy the 11 new, since it's much less risky, and in quite a few aspects actually outdoes the 10s Max, so in the long run, it may do you better, depending on your needs. 
And so that wraps up my review of the iPhone XS Max from a 2022 perspective. This is still a very capable device despite its age, and if you can work your way around the compromises of average battery life and cameras that don't have half the features that the new iPhones do, then it's a solid package for the $700 and a great example of how long iPhones can last while still carrying a high-end experience. If you enjoyed this video or found it useful in any way, please make sure you drop me a like and subscribe to Techspree for more reviews, insights, and the occasional unboxing. Thank you so much for watching, this is Tom with Textbury, and I'll see you as always next time.